Hi, this is Shadi. Recently I did a video on the Swiss Army and also the German Army when it came to training uh, in World War II. A lot of people mentioned the Finnish Army and it is something that I have seen before so today I will discuss it. They are very good at skiing obviously from the natural landscape that they have and how they fought the Soviets but today I'm going to talk about the grappling because it has really captured my attention. And for many reasons, uh, regarding little details that they actually apply, and also the amount of ground grappling that they do, it's not just a bit of wrestling or some judo standing up and then finishing with a blow on the ground. No, they actually have a lot of understanding. So let's begin. Um, here you see, of course, there is uh, self-defense against striking. Uh, grabbing the ankle twisting it but here when you twist the ankle it will get them to turn away and from here you have a very nice um, calf slice so of course uh, breaking grips is very important especially if you train no gi you would know the importance of this understanding the opening of the grips and how you can actually get them we've seen this in all jujitsu and uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu as well. So now this here really caught my attention. So you have someone strangling you and uh, straddling you at the same time. Notice the knee to the tailbone and pushing on it, which really unbalances them. And from there, you can actually turn them away. This I have seen uh, Hanzo Gracie explain it how to escape a knee on belly position. You start. Uh, similarly, where you press your knee against the tailbone, which really gets them on balance and uh, forces them to post their arm. And from there you have uh, the leg, you can grab it and turn away. And then from there, you can get on top and proceed to be offensive. So that little detail really caught my attention. Next is the understanding when someone is between your legs and you have an advantage. It's either you can lock their hips and keep them in position and turn them away like a hip thrust a sweep, or you can entangle their legs and from there you can sweep them to the side or you can actually apply a, a submission where it actually targets the adductors. Uh, the, it's a, more like a hip lock uh, through leg entanglement. It's called Ashi Garami. And uh, if you look at the old tiger scrolls, you can see that this uh, submission is uh, available. This is from, I believe, 1913. Um, and you can see the entanglement with both legs and uh, I've tried this and I did get a tap out of my uh, opponent. So it is something uh, very valuable to understand. Now here, uh, pinning the elbow and then pushing on the head, very similarly to how we do a juji katame, but obviously here he proceeds to do something else. Uh, I don't know why there's no arm locking, but here scissoring the head is also another thing can be found uh, in the Tiger Scrolls published in 1913. Uh, you can see obviously it is very effective and also very dangerous uh, squeezing the head that tightly. We all know how powerful the legs are compared to the head. Now next this is uh, self-defense uh, where you hit the groin, change the level and then reap away with the arms and letting go. This is what we call in Judo Morote Gari or uh, reaping with both hands. But uh, this is obviously war, so uh, striking the groin is very uh, key in those uh, situations. This is not about sportsmanship, this is warfare. Of course, your life is on the line. And here you can see you change level grab with both hands and then pull away and upwards towards you and they will lose all of the foundation from underneath them and they will immediately collapse. So uh, now let's take a look at 
some also old jujitsu self-defense coupled with a, uh, a knee lock uh, you go down you grip the ankle and you pull it towards you of course breaking fingers is always an option and it is highly effective in self-defense and of course it is readily available striking the groin as well here morotegari can also be done with one leg you're still technically reaping with both hands so here you see you grab the from underneath the thigh and then push on the head away then creating a wheel motion this is what you call a sukui nage and um, here a strike to the groin when someone has a side head lock pushing on the head and uh, scooping the leg so here you see Gracie again demonstrating this in a self-defense context a scooping throw and you push on the head and you scoop up the leg creating a wheel motion which will get them uh, lifted up and thrown this is from the self-defense unit of Hickson now this one I found quite pleasant um, I, I don't know about you but in my opinion such a risk should not be taken and uh, yes it's good it's a nice dive uh, anyone who has a pet will understand this type of surprise but quite risky as you can see and you can lose your life over it and um, now here this little detail really piqued my interest is the shoulder control and really pinning it uh, rather than doing it like competitors today they are doing it very similarly to old old jujitsu where you pin the arm pin the shoulder and you keep it tight to you and you can either grab also the cloth uh, and then you know pull away like you're pulling a rope or cutting down a sword so let's take a look at the fundamental form of ippon seoenage and you can see he grabs high on the shoulder and on the gi you don't have to grip the gi but still it's an option so here he's demonstrating they're demonstrating in this Kotog kodokan presentation uh, about the strike downwards to the head and you take the momentum and you cut down and uh, again notice how he would show the difference between the competitive variation and this basic variation so it's important to pin the shoulder and then cut down as you can see here because they will just be hanging from that one point and it's not a hip throw so all you have to do is cut down with your hands even if they're shorter than you so here you see this is how competitors do it today a lot sure it's effective but does it lock fully the arm like you see in this one no um, but I, I understand why they do it they don't have to reach that shoulder back and it can be quicker especially if they unbalance so it is understandable but the correct and fundamental form is this one so if you have anything to add please let me know down below consider supporting me for patreon or becoming a member this was shady and thank you for listening